Welcome to Minnesota Housing. Thank you for taking the time to view this tutorial as it highlights changes made to our 2016 RFP and 2017 Housing Tax Credit Program. It specifically addresses updates associated with our underwriting guidelines. During this tutorial, I will touch on changes to our reserve policy, guidelines on incentive developer fees, energy rebates, and guidelines on cash flow notes. As the Low Income Housing Tax Credit Program ages, the agency is seeing more proposals for resyndication. In an effort to distribute scarce resources, Minnesota Housing is changing its reserve policy to ensure that reserves remain with the property upon any transfer of ownership. In addition to the existing reserve requirements, the following has been added to Minnesota Housing's reserve policy. All unexpended funds remaining in project reserve accounts must remain for project use during the term of the agency's loan or the project extended use period, whichever is longer. The limited partnership agreement must include a provision addressing the terms and conditions for disbursement from the reserve accounts that specifically states that upon the transfer of any ownership interest or at the end of the compliance period, whichever is earlier, any funds remaining in the reserve account must remain with the project for the term of the agency loan or the extended use period, whichever is longer. Additionally, existing developments applying for tax credits and or refinancing will be required to show existing reserves as a source. Developments with an agency loan or tax credits will have the reserve requirement added to Minnesota Housing legal documents, as well as the Minnesota Housing Limited Partnership provisions. Next, I will discuss incentive developer fees. Incentive developer fees are addressed in Chapter 4, Section 3 of the Underwriting Standards, where new language has been added to the Developer Fee Limit section. The agency is beginning to see language and syndication agreements that allow a developer an incentive fee on any unused portions of the budgeted construction contingency. For developments receiving Minnesota housing funding, this is not an allowable use of unspent construction contingency and the agency will require any reference in the limited partnership agreement of a developer incentive fee to be removed from the partnership agreement. The underwriting standards in Chapter 11, Section 3 outline the agency's policy on cost savings at the end of construction. If cost savings remain at the end of construction or rehabilitation, they may be deposited in the replacement reserve account, used to reduce Minnesota housing funding, or be directed to another appropriate use for the benefit of the development. Any cost savings require Minnesota Housing's approval. Next, I will discuss energy rebates. Beginning with the 2015 RFP, an energy rebate analysis that outlines the type and amount of available utility incentives will be required for developments awarded tax credits or deferred funding. The purpose of this requirement is to leverage utility funds in order to increase the energy efficiency of Minnesota's affordable housing. The estimated rebate amount will be included as a funding source on the development budget, and Minnesota housing's tax credits and deferred loans will be sized based on this estimate. Please note that agency funding and or credit allocation will be subject to reduction based on the final rebate estimate. At the application phase, a preliminary rebate amount must be included as a source on the construction budget. An explanation of the energy rebate analysis must also be included. Prior to loan commitment, a final energy rebate analysis prepared by a third party entity with recommendations, calculations, energy models, or other technical data to support the recommendations will be required. If renewable energy strategies are proposed, a cost-benefit analysis will also be required. The energy rebate will need to be bridged during construction. After repayment of the bridge loan, Minnesota Housing requires any excess rebate funds be deposited into a reserve account. 
Alternatively, Minnesota Housing may allow excess funds to be applied toward the payment of the deferred developer fee. It is important to note that the rebate is not basis eligible and must be deducted from basis for calculation of credits. More details can be found in Chapter 8 of the Rental Housing Design Standards found on our website. Please also check back to the Minnesota Housing website to find further explanation of the energy rebate analysis. A cover letter and associated timeline document will be posted which compares the multifamily common application process next to a typical utility incentive application process, helping to demonstrate when the steps of each process are likely to occur in relation to each other. We'll now look at the agency's cash flow note policy. The underwriting standards released in connection with the 2016 RFP include some minor adjustments and a few clarifications to the description of how the agency will incorporate cash flow note provisions into deferred loans. The agency's standardized cash flow note methodology is intended as a light touch approach to recoup a relatively small amount of funds for developments that perform exceedingly well. Those dollars are then recycled into future developments. The basic parameters remain unchanged from the 2015 RFP, where deferred loans required an annual payment equal to 20% of eligible cash in excess of $50,000. Developments with 75% or more supportive housing or long-term homeless are exempt. Surplus cash is now defined as eligible cash as calculated on either HUD Form 93486 or Minnesota Housing's Surplus Cash Computation Form. Less credit adjusters, limited partner asset management fees, operating reserve replenishment, debt service reserve replenishment, general or limited partner loans or advances, deferred developer fees, and approved supplemental replacement reserve deposits. The intent to go from surplus cash to what we are now calling eligible cash is to tie into the limited partnership agreement waterfall and to ensure the project and partnership have covered the project's needs before calculating the deferred loan repayment. Ultimately, this is a collaborative effort. The clarifications to the cash flow note underwriting standards fall into two categories. First, making cash flow note provisions more harmonious with HUD insured first mortgage requirements, if applicable. And second, noting that the administration and repayment processing for each agreement might vary depending on funding partner arrangements. Your accountant can and probably already does calculate surplus cash in the project audit. If you do not have an accountant, please contact us and we will recommend someone to you. I would like to thank you for all you do to provide affordable housing in Minnesota. For more information about the underwriting process or our underwriting standards, please contact Susan Thompson, William Price, or visit our website at mnhousing.gov.